what I'm doing now is I'm going to look at the feasibility of cleaning up these clutch plates. Now you might say, well, why don't you replace them? But you can see these ones here. Although they've been standing around, they still have all the abrasion, the clutch abrasion on them. So they're not worn. This clutch at some point was fitted and then the bike was stored in a damp place. Looks like I managed to save this clutch. All these plates have been um, abrased and cleaned. I think what's happening here is that this inner sleeve which contains originally contained the glued in rubber mount for the ice elastics I might have to resort to some drastic measures here so next time you see it this will be bare metal Fresh out of the sandblaster. Look at that. Virgin material. Yes. This bike was very thinly sprayed. Very. I'm not even sure it had a primer on it. It was that thin. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised in those days when money was tight. But then I'm only making a guess. But yeah, it was very, very thin. Lots of inspection work to do now for, on joints and things. See if all the wells held up, particularly here. There's been a few concerns online. We feel people have commented about the Widowmaker frame. The main frame, subframe, is now complete. I say the frame is in really good condition. See uh, the usual weld join on here. Also, that I'll grind flat. Just check there. There's another weld here. I thought I saw. On here looks a bit rough but yeah well weld wise it looks good very good I'm particularly happy about about the state of this but I'll still give it a microscopic inspection just to see if there's any movement in this area but I think we're okay it looks okay Let's see that side well, it looks very solid. Excellent. All right, let's get this sandblasted so you can see where we're going to cut this out. Uh, as you know, I'm going to try and save this just because I can't, A, I can't find one. B, if I can get this sorted, this is the original one. I'd rather do this one. So good news. I'm going to have to repair these. You can see a hole there and a hole where that leak's coming from. But uh, one area is interesting the tar that's in here, the sandblaster will not remove. It's that soft and spongy. Um, I think they polished them in the 1967 one. So we'll have to see whether those are going to stay a satin or we're going to go gloss on those. The horn came out really well. This was a disaster. So uh, that's a Lucas horn. So I'm glad to save that. Now this, I'm not going to sandblast because this has already got quite a nice finish on it. So I'm going to wash this. I'm going to clean this. And get, get these shoes sent away. Not 
sure where this happened. This could have been an accident that had taken place. Let's see what's it punched out this side or pressed in. More like pressed in, I think. And now what I'm gonna do is address this issue of where the the mounting points are connected to the shock mounts. And these obviously just got hacked off. So I've roughly placed this in position and the seat is roughly going to be there. So now I've got to fill this in here and then it comes down like that. I'm going to roughly draw So let's have a look and see how that fits and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to make a template for the actual fiberglass. I'm not sure yet. So that's going to be as sweet as a nut. So taking this uh, rubber off, we found, you can see the different, the coloration between the old silver and the silver that's been hidden underneath the surface. So that's pretty much bang on what it would have been. So what our hair's doing now is we're just going to, top, to see what silver we've got. And what he does is he shines a light on looking at the metallic reflections and the, and the color, the way the silver behaves with light because under certain light, the silver might look the same, but under other light, it might not. It looks pretty good, eh? In my opinion, it does. Very close. Honestly, with silvers, like very small sil flake silvers like this one, you don't have much different. Between these two, which is the different, so it's nearly nothing you know yeah. yeah 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 okay i'm happy with that If you look at drawings or actual ones, if you even have one, you'll notice that this lip doesn't extend out, it actually comes down. So I've just measured it on the bike and so I'll just cut that out so that it will um, mate well with this end and then we'll fiberglass it. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yep. Good lineup. That's what we're talking about. Uh, all this damage that had been there before is now solid epoxy. So we're gonna 
profile all this out, get these sharp edges back. Somebody had sanded the heck out of this shape. So I've put the edges back on again so we'll get them out nice and crisp again. Uh, the tank had quite a lot of work done to it. Same leftover epoxy I've just put onto here. Uh, this was chipped away. Lots of little, little damages here. This was also damaged. And tomorrow we'll get it profiled and ready for primer coat. Um, there is one other job that I'm going to do before I do anything on that is uh, take this out, heat this out. I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll just come out because it's a, an epoxy, so we'll just give it a good steam out. Um, knock it out, then put a replacement one in there because this one is just shot. I don't really want to use that. We go on to something that uh, oscillates. So this rotates, this oscillates, and that gives it a smoother finish. Obviously the grit's different as well, but it helps cleaning all profiles. And if we need heavy duty cutting, or removing a lot of the epoxy or fiberglass, we'll just use a sanding disc on a Dremel. So a little potholes to do on here. And once that's done, this is pretty good, really solid. Oh, these holes, they were all stripped through, so we'll uh, get that sanded back. Although this looks alarming. Um, it's not bad. All this gets repoxied in and the new one fits in so I want to get rid of all this. I'm going to put a primer on here. It's a self-filling primer, which takes care of all these tiny little scratches. I'm not going to bother taking them out because I don't know, even though I can feel with my hand, how smooth that's gone back. I still don't know what imperfections there are. So the primer will level off the color so that you can see exactly what's going on with the shape. And then you're going to go back in and fix, remove primer, and so on and so forth. So you just keep going around until it's perfect. Some writing on here. L84 or L64. Bits of filler to deal with all the tiny little pinholes that you get typically with uh, mold castings like this. I'm sure they had the same problem where they had every single tank had to be filled with something to, to, to stop the holes, the little pinholes. This is now in. It's still, this is the second gluing because it was quite tricky actually to get this to sit in place because it's quite a wide mold. Anyway, it's in now. Um, I'm going away on holiday, so when I get back, we'll profile that off nice and squarely, clean that all off, get this ready for paint, and go. But so it's nice to have the cleaner looking uh, uh, cap on there. So yeah, all all good. Um, we progress slowly, but when the paint comes on, you'll see it go quickly. Oh yes. 